Hello there. Whether you're learning this for the first time or reviewing it again later, welcome to this video where we will talk about speed. If you think about a running race, then the winner is the person who finishes first, and that means they go fastest. But what does that really mean, to go fast? We all have an everyday idea of what it means to go fast, but there's actually a lot more to it than that. Speed is a way to measure how fast things are going. Let's look at an example. This is Dick. Dick loves running. Let's see Dick run 30 meters. Okay, so that's not really 30 meters, but that is five seconds. So now we know two numbers about Dick's run. He ran 30 meters in five seconds. But how does this help us? Strap in, it's time for physics, which is putting numbers into relationships using maths. Okay, that's not all physics is, but that's part of it. First, we ask, if Dick ran 30 meters in five seconds, how far did he run in just one of those seconds? To answer that, we divide the distance by the time. If we divide the 30 meters over the five seconds, we will get the number of meters he ran in each second. And we can see that 30 divided by five is six. So Dick ran six meters in each of his seconds, at least if he ran the same speed the whole time. So we can say that Dick's speed is six meters per second, and that's the SI unit of speed, the meter per second, which we can write as m slash s. So to find the speed, we divide the distance traveled over the time taken. Let's try some examples. Pause the video if you need time to think. What if Dick runs 36 meters in nine seconds? What was his speed then? 36 divided by nine is four. So Dick's speed on this second run is four meters per second, a bit slower this time. What about if Dick runs 50 meters in eight seconds? What is his speed this time? 50 does not divide evenly into eight. So the answer we get here is 6.25 or six and a quarter meters per second. Let's also try a real world example. Usain Bolt ran the 100 meters in 9.58 seconds. That's the world record. What was his speed? 100 divided by 9.58 gives us 10.438 meters per second. It's important to remember that most questions in the real world give us messy decimal answers like this. Whole number answers are mostly just for practicing in school. Another thing we do a lot in physics, like a lot, is use equations. Remember, an equation is like a scale for balancing numbers. Speed equals distance over time. That's our equation here. And it's the simplest kind of physics equation there is. Use two numbers to give us a third number. We can also show this equation using letters to stand for the qualities to make it quicker to write down. In this case, we use V equals D over T. We use V for speed because it stands for velocity. Velocity is a lot like speed, but it also includes direction. That makes it a little bit more complicated, so we won't talk about that right now. This relationship is one of the easiest to understand because we see things move all the time in our everyday life, so we can really get a feel for what speed means and how we see it change. This is not always true in physics. Three number equations like this can also be easier to remember in triangle form. Take a triangle and the three letters go in like this. You can see here that distance is at the top of the triangle. That is important because the triangle also helps us to remember the relationship. We can see that speed V equals distance over time. But in the same triangle, we can also see that the distance D equals speed multiplied by time. 
and also that time t equals distance over speed. It is really important that the same letter always goes on top. So when you learn this triangle, d goes on the top, and that means that distance is always divided by one of the other letters. So now you can see if you can use the triangle to answer these questions. Again, pause if you need to. Let's say Dick runs at a speed of 4 meters per second for 15 seconds. How far does he run? So, how far means we want to calculate distance at the top, and that means we multiply the other two numbers. 4 times 15 is 60, so Dick runs 60 meters. Try another one. How long will it take you to run 100 meters if your speed is 5 meters per second? How long can be confusing because it could be how long in distance, or how long in time. But we can see that we are running 100 meters, we already have the distance, so we're trying to work out time. Divide the distance by the speed, 100 divided by 5, and this gives us a time of 20 seconds. Finally, if a person drives 1 kilometer in 1 minute, how fast are they driving? Now we're asking for speed, so this is going to be distance over time, just like before. And you could say their speed is one kilometer per minute, but we will need to convert the units if we're going to get an answer in meters per second. One kilometer is 1,000 meters, and one minute is 60 seconds. So 1,000 divided by 60 gives us a speed of 16.66666 meters per second. This last answer is a recurring decimal. The sixes go on forever. We write this by putting a bar or a dot over the numbers that repeat. You can see in these examples that there's already quite a lot going on here. We can also plot distance and time on a graph and find the speed that way. This uses the idea of a gradient from maths, and you might need to learn about that first if you don't know it already. Here is Dick's run from our very first example. Remember, he ran 30 meters in 5 seconds. In science, we always put time on the horizontal x-axis, and so here you can see the time runs along 5 seconds. And then we show other things on the vertical y-axis. So in this case, distance goes up by 30 meters. So Dick's run is shown by the point labeled as x. You can see that every second, Dick's distance increases by the same amount. At one second, he is at 6 meters. At two seconds, he is at 12 meters. Three seconds, 18 meters. 4 seconds, 24 meters, and so by 5 seconds he has reached 30 meters. The speed on this graph is shown by the gradient of the line, which we calculate by rise over run. In other words, how much the graph rises up, divided by how much the graph runs along. And again, that is 30 meters up, divided by 5 seconds along, which gives us the same answer of 6 meters every second. So the graph we've made shows us Dick's speed of 6 meters per second, and we know his speed doesn't change because it is a straight line. And a straight line has the same gradient all the way along. Every one second, the graph goes up another 6 meters. We call this a constant speed. Of course, things change their speed all the time, and there are many other ways that Dick could run 30 meters in 5 seconds. But for now, let's keep it simple. You can see that physics makes things very abstract. We can't tell from this graph that this is Dick running. It could be an animal, or a car driving, or even a rocket ship. It doesn't matter. All we need to see is the distance and the time, and we can work out the speed. And if it's a straight line on a distance time graph, that means the speed is constant. Let's try a few examples. Remember to pause if you need to so you can have a think about them. Here is another distance time graph. 
Can you tell how far this object moved, how long it took to move, and also what speed it was moving at? It's a straight line, so we know that the speed is constant. On the graph, we can see that the line stops when the time is at 4 seconds on the x-axis. And at that time, the line has risen to 40 meters on the y-axis. So the object traveled 40 meters in 4 seconds. We take that 40 meters rise and divide it by the 4 seconds, that's rise over run, and that gives us the gradient of the graph, which is the speed. So the speed is 40 divided by 4, or 10 meters per second. So if this graph is of a person running, then they are almost as fast as Usain Bolt, the world record holder. As an extra question here, if this object kept moving at the same speed for another 8 seconds, what would the total distance be? After another 8 seconds, then the object will have been moving for 12 seconds total. So 12 seconds at a speed of 10 meters every second is 12 times 10, 120 meters. We could see that on the graph if we continued the line up and if we had space to plot it. If you look carefully at the units on this calculation, you can see that the seconds of time cancel with the per seconds of speed, and so we're left with just meters of distance for our answer. Let's try another one. What is the time, distance, and speed that is shown on this graph? The graph goes along the x-axis for 6 seconds, and at the end of that 6 seconds, it has risen 15 meters on the y-axis. So we divide the 15 meter rise by the 6 second run, and that gives us a speed of 2.5 meters per second. And again, if this object moved for another 10 seconds, how far would it have moved altogether? So our initial 6 seconds plus another 10 seconds is 16 seconds. 16 seconds times 2.5 meters per second is 40 meters. So we can see that even though this object is moving for longer, it does not go as far as our last example because it is slower. This makes sense. Be careful looking at this one. What are the time, distance, and speed here? If you are looking carefully, then you'll see that the scale on this graph has changed. So the graph goes along the x-axis for 6 seconds again, and it goes up the y-axis for 15 meters again. So the speed here will be exactly the same as the last example, 2.5 meters per second. You have to pay attention to the scale on graphs, because the same graph can look very different if you change the numbers on the bottom and up the side. Sometimes people will use this to trick you. Watch out! Let's try one more. What do you think the time, distance, and speed of this object is? Take a moment if you need to. Just use the same ideas as before, but there's something different here, isn't there? This graph is running for 6 seconds along the x-axis, but in that 6 seconds, it doesn't go up at all. The distance is 0, and 0 divided by 6 is 0. So this speed is 0 meters per second. The object is not moving, and the gradient of the line is 0. While we're here, I'll point out I could also draw this line on the graph. This object is also not moving, but it's not moving at 40 meters. What does that mean? It means we need to know where 0 meters is, and that makes things a bit more complicated. We may look at this in a later video, but it goes back to the ideas of velocity and direction that we mentioned before. This has been a very quick introduction to the idea of speed. I've tried to make it as simple as possible, but also show you that there are some details that you need to watch out for. If you followed all of it, then well done. Go and do some practice to make sure you understand it properly. But if you didn't understand it all, don't worry. This can be quite hard to think about the first time, and maybe my explanation didn't quite work for you. You can watch again to see where you got lost, 
or try another video that might click better with your understanding. Either way, there's more to learn and you can get it if you keep trying. Don't give up. Hi there, hope you enjoyed the video. If so, you can leave a like or a comment down below if you want. Stick around to watch some more, or if you prefer shorter videos, you can find these lessons chopped up on my other channel, which is up there. Whatever you do, please, please keep learning something, because it really is true that no matter who you are or how old you are, every day is a school day. Bye for now.